everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And today we've taken over the intern project to talk about Proxmox on Lenovo Nano uh, cluster. This is our little three node Proxmox cluster. And for those of you that aren't all the way up on Proxmox, honestly, I've been a little bit behind the curve. We've known about it, but we haven't played it with it a whole lot. How would you describe Proxmox in four words or less? It's a low-cost hypervisor. That was way more than four words. Low-cost hypervisor. What was that? It's four words. Okay. Four words, low-cost hypervisor. It's actually free to mess around with. You would just pay for support if you were going to use it in the enterprise. And what we did is we like these little guys so much, we got three more from Lenovo and installed the hypervisor, clustered them, and even ran performance benchmarks. Yeah, and surprisingly, when you're talking about performance benchmarks, you wouldn't think of like a quarter million IOPS or four gig a second uh, bandwidth from you just a small You clip. ruined the big reveal. Well, I mean, it's not really a big reveal. The big <laughs> reveal is you don't have to have gigantic systems or really loud systems to do pretty well for home lab. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing as we think about home lab. I mean, we got out this uh, SE350, certainly not home lab, but one step larger than the nanos and a good deal smaller than a traditional server. But as anyone that knows that started their home lab, the first thing that you do when you get a server, you power it on. If you're not used to it, it makes a tremendous amount of noise. We have some servers that make noise with fans even before they're powered on. So they scream, they use a lot of power, and they put off a lot of heat. There's other thermals that you've got to worry about when you start putting servers in your home. And if you live with somebody, you'll hear about the noise pretty quickly. Yeah, unless it's hidden away in a basement or something, it, 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 they're hard to avoid. Basement, garage, attic? Well, this is why my home lab is in the room next door. Yeah, right. Not, we're not in your home, though, today. Yeah. So when we look at the M90N, and then you've got the IoT version, Yeah. What do you, what's your favorite part about these? So there's a lot to like with these. Uh, they're a fairly low-cost platform. Uh, Lenovo's had these on sale for uh, close to $400 for a long time now. And uh, when you... Uh, from other small platforms, there's no hard drive inside, which is a big plus. But uh, Lenovo's been nice where they have two M.2 bays. So you can configure them with a pretty decent amount of flash. No hard drives, low heat, really fast. And it, it just sits there. You don't have to like pay attention to it. Well, and it's packaged and it's well designed, too. This is in the Think Center line. So it's uh, not quite a workstation, but has enough power in there. These have, what, core i Fives? What do we have in this thing? Uh, it depends on the uh, version uh, spec out, but uh, these have the uh, Core i5 8265s, I believe. Okay. Um, and, and like you said, this uh, this model, just a single screw, this cover pops off and it has two NVMe drive bays inside M.2. Yeah. Um, other small platforms out there, we just looked at that MSI QB, Intel Nux are, are running rampant. How do you think about these in conjunction with what else is out there in the micro space? Well, when you look at the micro space and uh, when you're buying hardware for yourself versus used, um, Lenovo's, these are going to come with on-site support options. They're going to have really nice warranties. And from what we've seen, the build quality is fantastic. You don't really have to worry about doing a lot to it. It just works out of the box. Yeah, no, the build quality on these things is fantastic. And the big difference between this and the IoT version is that one's got a big heat spreader on top. The specs are a little bit different. That one's got two NICs on it. It's got serial ports. It's made for a little bit more of a rugged environment. Well, they're both designed for harsh conditions. I think they both operate to like 50 degrees Celsius. I mean, they're designed for areas where you wouldn't normally find other systems. And if you're looking at uh, other kind of IoT uh, type devices, everything that's small might not be compatible with harsh conditions. That's true. And that guy's fanless too, isn't it? Yeah, and actually the top, if I can break it off in one piece, is a nice extruded aluminum uh, heat sink on top. Yeah, and actually we've reviewed both of these before, and on the website we've got a nice thermal shot of, uh, of that, those fins all heated up. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go straight back to this cluster. So as we said, three, you've got uh, Ethernet connected, Proxmox VE63 on all of them clustered. Yeah. Yeah, and we have uh, additional drive in each, um, right. and it's really just added for storage right now. But, I mean, it's out of the box. They work just incredibly well. It's easy to install, smooth to get up and running. And this is running. So if you pick up a little bit of background noise of fans, it's this little guy. There's nothing else going on in this room. And it's, what, 
18 inches from me and I can hear it, but it's not, if we had three of these going, doing the same thing, as much as we love these little things, you would hear it in the, uh, in the mics easy. Yeah, and to give you an idea, these guys are both all running around, I think it's showing at 55% CPU uh, utilization right now, where if you did that with any other type of server, especially at those uh, compute loads, now, they're not going to be as powerful as a big server, but sure. for test dev or home lab, you're oh, not going to be pushing modern servers to the point. Absolutely. And you can do, I mean, we did Proxmox with this, but you can do ESXi if you're willing to do a little legwork to work around. We think it can be done. Uh, you could put TrueNAS on here. You could put uh, just anything you want software to find. Yeah, as long as you know what, they're, what the limitations are going into it, there are a lot of options for these. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the UI a little bit because we did get this running. I'll switch over to that. And Kevin's already got the three hosts set up, a couple VMs on each. And you already said it before, but you went ahead and performance tested these six VMs and you were able to get some pretty good I.O. out of that thing. Yeah, we were close to around a quarter million IAPS for uh, read. I think uh, right was maybe 203,000 IAPS, 4K random. Um, and then on the bandwidth side, I mean, uh, sequential read was like four gig a second or a little bit above. I mean, it does pretty well, and I'm not sure we we're actually testing both NVMe drives inside of these. So there's there's a lot of upward momentum with these uh, types of platforms, and you're not limited to just using like a SATA device, for example. Right. Um, so what do you have going on inside here? Just as a quick little tour through Proxmox. So uh, with these uh, systems, there are uh, four cores with hyperthread, and so we see eight available CPUs, and uh, what I ended up doing, and then we also have eight gig of RAM each. Uh, so I configured uh, two VMs per host. Each of these VMs are equipped with uh, three CPUs and three gig of memory. I just want to leave a little bit ahead because we're going to be running. Uh, it's unlike you to leave anything behind, especially with these little systems. Well, overtasking things, especially for a lot of these benchmarks, I don't want to run out of memory and have like Java errors or something. Uh, but they it's really easy to get the stuff going on here. And to give you an idea of how quickly you can deploy a VM, uh, you select your uh, host, um, give it a name. So let's say test VM, and you roll through, uh, select your OS. In this case, we're gonna install from ISO uh, for CentOS 7 and um, bypass that. Uh, you set your uh, disk size for the boot drive. 50 so, gig. So while you're doing that, how comfortable is this to you? I mean, you've lived in vSphere for a decade or more. This is a little bit new, but how familiar does it feel for those that aren't used to Proxmox? Um, I think for jumping to a hypervisor, um, it's not that much more difficult than messing around with uh, VMware or Hyper-V. If you've used any of these before, uh, a lot of the things are in the same types of positions, turning the VMs on or off, creating new VMs. Uh, a lot of that um, terminology is going to be in the same spot. Um, there's going to be a nuance of how do you upload your ISOs into it sure. uh, or get the storage online. But beyond that, a lot of the stuff just it's pretty smooth to get up and running. Okay. So you got our VM done. Yes. So right now it's building. And um, once it is uh, deployed, you're at that point, you can power it on, get the um, the CentOS installer. And it's go. picking up the naming, the 106 from the whole cluster then. Yeah. So this would be the 106th VM that uh, was deployed on the uh, uh, cluster. Okay. And you can migrate things around. Uh, we were using that to uh, push the VMs across the cluster to uh, clone them. At this stage, at least from what we were messing around with, uh, you can clone on individual nodes, but you can't clone across the cluster. Although there might be certain things. I mean, we just jumped into this and started messing around with it a couple of days ago. But it's, I mean, a lot of the functionality is uh, pretty nice on this. And so what other visualizations are there in terms of reporting? Uh, you you get, are running some load against this thing. Yeah, so you get access into uh, what the uh, uh, host stats are for uh, peak CPU usage and uh, the footprint of uh, just load, load on the server, memory footprint, and uh, network traffic, things like that. Uh, so the, you get a lot of the same stats, and actually a lot of the real-time stats in Proxmox are a little bit nicer than what you'd find on VMware. Oh, yeah? Um, there's more delays that come in with VMware. I'm not sure people are looking at it from an instantaneous standpoint, but the reporting on this is pretty good. So what else stands out? I mean, you talked about the 
uh, relative ease of getting the VM set up, operating, then you set up VD Bench and to run your performance workloads, right? Yeah, we had um, from there. It's that's more set up for CentOS versus Proxmox, but uh, we installed uh, Java and uh, moved on our uh, VD Bench uh, uh, compiled version and then our uh, workloads themselves to get them up and running. And so the next big thing I want to do is figure out how to take the, our massive three terabytes of storage and share it out to the world. Uh, I mean, you could do that. Uh, that's Which more of a networking conversation. Haven't done that yet. We will try to do that and and look at uh, other ways to uh, to explore. But just based on you know going into this, as you said, we haven't spent a lot of time on Proxmox. What's I, I don't need a formal verdict, but for home lab test dev messing around, you're pretty content with it. Yeah, it's fairly capable. I like it. Okay. Well, there you have it. We've got this little nano cluster set up. If there's something you'd like to see us do with these nanos, drop us a note, let us know. We want to uh, continue to play and explore. Uh, and we've got the whole detail if you want to walk through on the site of how to uh, set up Proxmox 6.3, how we got the VMs going, how we got the cluster going. So that's all detailed. Uh, we'll make sure to link you to that in the, uh, uh, in the description. But for now, thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.